In organic chemistry, much of the time our focus is on bonds, often making bonds or breaking bonds. And we know that bonds are shared pairs of electrons. So our focus really is on pairs of electrons and what they're doing. We need a way to track what they're doing, and we use a convention called the arrow pushing convention to see what's happening with pairs of electrons. These curved arrows that we draw show movement of pairs of electrons, and we have a full head on the arrow. So I want to emphasize that we're talking about pairs of electrons with a full headed arrow. Now there are two different kinds of things that we analyze carefully where this arrow pushing convention to track electron pairs is particularly important. One is chemical reactions, determining what happens and particularly how that happens. We're going to need to track what bonds are made and broken. That involves shared pairs of electrons that will be moving and we'll use our arrow pushing convention to track that. Secondly, you've heard that resonance stabilization of ions is particularly important. We need to understand how we can write resonance structures. Which resonance structures can we write? Which resonance structures are formed and why? The arrow pushing convention will help us track that too. Let's take a look at some examples. First, chemical reactivity. One of the types of chemical reactions we'll see a lot involves transfer of a proton. When an alcohol, such as isopropyl alcohol, that I've drawn here, is put together with HBr, a proton transfers from the bromine to the oxygen. There's a new bond formed, oxygen has a positive charge, and the bromine is negatively charged. When we pay close attention to what's happening with the electron pairs, using air pushing to help us, this all makes real sense. Take a look. Now we see these same structures, carefully showing the lone pairs, the unshared pairs, in each of the structures. And as we analyze it, we can see that an unshared pair on oxygen is used to make the new bond between oxygen and a hydrogen. And this bond, consisting of a pair of electrons that are shared between hydrogen and bromine, is broken, and that electron pair stays with bromine. So the new bond is formed by movement of a pair of electrons on oxygen that were unshared to share with hydrogen. And the extra electron pair results from the pair that was shared between hydrogen and bromine remaining entirely with bromine. The result is a new bond. Bromine has an extra pair of electrons. It becomes negatively charged. Oxygen becomes positively charged. And this makes lots of sense as we track the arrow pushing to show where the electrons come from, oxygen, and where they go to, bromine. It's really important to notice that the end of the arrow shows where the electrons come from, and the head of the arrow shows where the electrons go to. The arrow shows movement of electrons, not atoms. Especially as you're becoming used to using this convention, it's easy to think of these arrows as showing where atoms are going. It's not the case. We're only interested in tracking electron pairs, and these curved arrows are devoted exclusively to showing electron pairs. A second type of reaction where we use curved arrows effectively is analyzing bond breaking. Take a look. We're going to learn that if we make that protonated isopropyl alcohol that we show above, it will lose water. Again, we can make sense out of this easily if we are careful to look at the electron pairs and track the movement of electron pairs using arrow pushing. Let's draw in the electron pairs. An ion that has an oxygen with a single unshared pair. When this bond is broken, to make water, this electron pair that's forming a bond between carbon and oxygen goes to be entirely with oxygen. This robs the carbon of electron density, making the positive charge on carbon, and leaving an electron pair on water, a stable neutral molecule. And thirdly, bond-making processes are also easily analyzed and tracked 
using the same convention. When that carbocation that I wrote above is formed, it's got a positive charge on carbon, and you know that formal charge is telling us that this carbon has too few electrons. It needs another electron pair. When we have bromide together with that carbocation, they form a new organic compound, a stable neutral molecule, isopropyl bromide. How do we rationalize that? Well, we'll draw in the unshared electron pairs. And because bromide has four unshared electron pairs around it, it has a negative charge. Carbon needs an electron pair. It has a positive charge. When a pair of these electrons on bromide is used to form a covalent bond with that carbon, we form a stable neutral molecule where the new bond is formed using that pair of electrons. And the arrow pushing conventions lets us track that exactly. So here we are. We see three reactions, a proton transfer reaction, bond breaking reaction, and the bond making reaction, all of which are tracked clearly by using the arrow pushing convention once we have drawn in all the unshared electron pairs. And by the way, take a look at what we've written here overall. What we've said is, if we treat isopropyl alcohol with HPR, we'll make isopropyl bromide and water. This is summarized by the equation isopropyl alcohol plus HBr makes isopropyl bromide plus water. And this single reaction illustrates proton transfers, bond breaking, and bond making steps, all tracked with arrow pushing once we take a look at unshared electron pairs, as well as the electrons involved in covalent bonds that are breaking. Let's take a look at resonance stabilization of ions. Which structures form and why? Arrow pushing lets us explain that easily. Here's an example you've seen already. Carboxylic acids are especially acidic because the conjugate base that is formed when they lose a proton is resonance stabilized. We say there's two possible resonance structures. That's easy to see when we track what's happening with the unshared electron pairs and the electrons involved in the pi bond. Take a look. Resonance structures involve moving electron pairs only. And you can see that in these two resonance structures, the atoms are arranged in exactly the same way. What's changed is the arrangement of the electrons. A pair of electrons on this oxygen has been used to form a new pi bond between this carbon and oxygen. And a pair of electrons involved in this pi bond has moved up on oxygen. So now in this resonance structure, this oxygen has three unshared pairs, and this oxygen only has two. And therefore, the negative charge has moved from this oxygen, which had three unshared pairs, to this oxygen, which now has three unshared pairs. And when you do the formal charge calculations for these oxygens, you can convince yourself that this oxygen has a negative charge in this structure, and this oxygen has a negative charge in this structure. Arrow pushing lets us see how we can get from one resonance structure to the other without, did you notice this? Without the negative charge ever being shown on carbon. As we write these resonance structures, that negative charge skips a carbon and moves to the other oxygen. It skips the middle atom. Let's take a look at another example where we'll see the same thing. This carbocation is particularly stable because there's another resonance structure we can write. How do we explain that? Track those electrons? Well, in this case, there are no unshared pairs involved, are there? We're simply rewriting this structure with a pair of these pi electrons moving from being shared where they are to being shared the next bond over. And in so doing, we're robbing this in carbon of the pi bond of a pair of electrons, and we're moving electron density over here. So the positive charge skipped from one end of this pi system to the other without ever being on the middle carbon. Again, arrow pushing lets us understand how we write these two resonance structures as being related to each other, and the positive charges being located on these two carbons without ever being associated with the middle carbon. So being comfortable with arrow pushing will let you track what's happening with resonance structures and the stabilization of ions, which you're going to find is quite important. 
So for two reasons, analysis of bond making and breaking and analysis of resonance structures of ions, you're going to find that this arrow pushing convention is very useful, allows us analytical insight to understand what's actually happening.